What's up beautiful people? Jen here. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Jenna Lee, the internet's girl next door, aka Jen Sparkly, commander of the Sparkle Army. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel and hanging out in my little corner of the internet. You should totally stay. I'm a blast. So uh, yeah, go ahead and hit that like button. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit the little bell thingamajiggy. I'm a blast. Do it. It's Friday, and that can only mean one thing. Actually, it probably means a lot of things, but here in Sparkle Army Land, it means it's time for This Week in Sparkle. This Week in Sparkle is my weekly series where I cover news, whether it's pop culture, YouTube drama, music, movie trailers, or sometimes it's just cute animals. Just whatever tickles my fancy that week. And my fancy got tickled quite a bit this week. That sounded bad. Yeah. As always, I will include the links to everything I discuss in the description box below. Please watch the videos, read the articles. I want to know what you guys think. I love getting your feedback. I love hearing what you think. As always, I encourage discussion, but if you can't speak without being racist, misogynistic, homophobic, or just a general douche canoe, you will be mocked, blocked, and forgotten, just like that. And all opinions that I offer in these videos are mine and mine alone. They do not reflect the thoughts, opinions, beliefs, or feelings of any of the companies for whom I might be an ambassador or promoter. Now with that said, let's get into this week in Sparkle. We're starting off this week with a follow-up. You guys remember the story about the FBI agent who was busting a move on a dance floor in Denver, Colorado and was really feeling it. You know, he was popping and locking and Decided a backflip was a good idea, and the backflip was not a good idea, as his weapon fell out of the holster, I think. It may have just been tucked into his waistband, I'm not sure. Either way, it fell out and hit the floor. When he goes to pick it up, it fires, hitting a club goer in the leg who then had to go to the hospital and be treated. Now, at the time of the incident, the FBI was not releasing the name of the gentleman, due to personnel concerns. However, now we know the dancing gunman is named Chase Bishop. He's 29 years old and he's already turned himself in. He has been charged with one count of second degree assault and we are currently waiting for the results of his blood work to come back to see what his blood alcohol level was, if he was on any drugs, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll know more, and I will continue to follow up on this story because it's funny. <laughs> Next up, people in Florida, Lord have mercy. The Office of the Inspector General, the state of Florida, recently found out that in 2016, the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services we're not using NICS, which is the National Instant Criminal Background Check system when selling firearms. That's right. For a lengthy period of time, there were no background checks being run. That's right. Now... The reason for this, the employee responsible is named Lisa Wild. She forgot her login. Yeah, forgot her login and for whatever reason waited 40 days to report to the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, hey, I can't get into the system. Of course, bureaucracy red tape. There was no follow-up. 
equals a cluster you know what. Denials, denials, denials here and there. Basically what this comes down to is they figured out that these checks weren't being run when all of these appeals for like concealed carry permits, they weren't getting any denials. Yeah. So, yay Florida. As always, thank you for making Alabama look not quite so horrible. In lighter news and fun news, I've talked about this channel before and I'm a huge fan. Dave Knows Wrestling, one of the very best wrestling YouTubers, one of the best YouTubers, period, has this great recurring series called Monday Night Wrong. It follows him and his staff of assistants as they're putting together a program of some sort. But it always devolves into madness as they end up just debating wrestling. There had been a three-month absence. We had not had any episodes of Monday Night Wrong. And it is back with a vengeance. It is awesome. Definitely check it out. Link will be in the description. Definitely go show Dave some love. And if you go watch it, mention in the comments that Jenna, Jenna sent you. To say, hey Dave, Jenna Lee's Beauty Slam sent me. She says hello. Dave's one of my favorite people and I just love him to pieces. Next up, also in wrestling news, um, Eric Bischoff, as we know, has started doing a podcast with Conrad from the MLW, you know, the Major League Wrestling podcast series, known for What Happened When with Tony Schiavone and Something to Wrestle with Bruce Pritchard. Now we have 83 Weeks, the awesome podcast with Eric Bischoff that retraces the 83 Weeks that WCW was the dominant force in Monday Night Wrestling. They're doing a good deed. As you know, they have lots of different designs for all shows available on ProWrestlingTees.com. They currently have one up for Mabel, or you may know him as Viscera, or Big Daddy V, or the 1995 King of the Ring. Or you may know him by his real name somehow of Nelson Frazier. Either way, he passed on a few years ago, and you can currently buy one of these Mabel t-shirts at ProWrestlingTees.com with proceeds benefiting his family. It's a very worthwhile cause. And I get a little emotional just because it's, it's sweet. And he's someone I grew up watching. And too many wrestlers die too young. Um, but yeah, uh, Shane Helms, the Hurricane, was recently modeling one for us on Twitter. Definitely pick yours up because uh, it is not cheap to die. And uh, I know his family is devastated. It's been a few years since he passed, but show a little love to, to his family if you can. He was a good guy and clearly was very well thought of within the industry. So let's, let's show King Mabel a little love if we can. I'll have the link to ProWrestlingTees.com. Check them out. They're awesome. Uh, next up. The Millie Bobby Brown Twitter debacle. I don't know if you guys have heard about this, but I'm going to kind of break this down. We all know who Millie Bobby Brown is, the adorable, sweet little girl from Stranger Things who can flow better than most rappers on the charts today. She, being a teenage girl, has been active on Twitter, but she also is notorious for being incredibly kind and gracious to her fans. Well, it started a while back, but a Twitter user by the name of Kelsey Fiona tweeted out a story saying that she met Millie Bobby Brown in an airport, asked for a photo, and that Millie Bobby Brown told her, not until you take off your hijab, of course, the Muslim headdress. She said, I, to my faith, I don't want to. And she said that Millie Bobby Brown refused and stormed. Uh, no, no, that was a different story. This girl said Millie Bobby Brown ripped her hijab off, threw it on the ground, and stomped on it. People in the that very Twitter thread called her out and said, you're not even wearing a hijab in your picture. You're not wearing a hijab in your profile picture. And the girl tried to say, yeah, because Millie Bobby Brown threw it on the ground and stomped on it. Like, 
Millie Bobby Brown is not in your profile picture. That was proven, obviously, to be bogus, and that account was suspended. However, it started a very ugly trend. Hashtag take down Millie Bobby Brown. Sharing hideously untrue, hateful, horrendous, supposed fan encounters. This has divided the internet in half because, of course, it has. You've got people saying you're bullying a 14-year-old girl. I hope you're proud of yourself. The other half of the internet is saying it's a joke. It's obviously a joke. We all know that this couldn't be any further from who Millie Bobby Brown is. No one would ever believe that. And unfortunately, that defense is so flimsy because as we have learned and we learn every day, stupid people will believe anything they read on the internet. And long after these people have tired of this spicy meme, all of those stories are still going to exist on the internet and they're all going to be tied to that girl's name. So long after the funny ha-ha is over, people will be able to see these horrendous, racist, misogynistic, xenophobic stories about this girl, and they're not going to know it was a meme. They're not going to know it was a prank bro. They're going to associate that with this girl. It's gotten so bad that she left Twitter. It, 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 with every passing week, I am just astounded at the garbage people will put on the internet. The things that people will do just shamelessly, classlessly seeking validation with likes and clicks and subs. Like There's still a real world out there. This is fun. And don't get me wrong. Everyone wants to succeed. Subscribe to my channel, like my channel, retweet my stuff, follow me on social media for the love of God, please. You know, I, I get it. We all want to grow. We all want to build, but we I don't want to do it at the expense of someone else. People suck. <laughs> People suck. And that's all I got on that. Uh, next up. I just finished a podcast with the Future Entertainment fellas. We covered NXT predictions and Money in the Bank predictions. Definitely head over to the Future Entertainment website and check out that podcast. That was a blast. We were joined by Hossie Bomb himself, the incredibly talented indie wrestler and a total sweetheart to boot. And, of course, Mr. Logan Myers himself. It was a good time. Definitely check that out. And... Finally, to close out this week in Sparkle, you guys know that I end every week with adorable animal stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed last week's twofer, the cute puppy and the quokkas. This week, I'm combining two of my favorite things in another video. This beautiful, fluffy, white Samoyed puppy and his mom have recreated the intro to The Office as a dog he dresses up as Michael Scott he dresses up as Dwight Schrute and he dresses up as Andy the Nard Dog Bernard you can see in the beginning where he Xeroxes his tennis ball he has a little difficulty working the paper shredder but you know I think it was his first day so I'm not going to judge him too harshly on that but definitely definitely click the link watch this it is adorable and that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, yes, I stole that line. And yes, my hair is greasy, so I'm doing my best Nikki Bella. You can nip, but you can't touch. Unless you got money to buy me lots of stuff. Yeah. My hair is greasy and... Yeah. Thank you for watching This Week in Sparkle. As always, I love you guys. The channel is growing. Every single day we are getting more subs. Thank you to everyone who is new to the Sparkle Army. Thank you. Let me know in the comments below if you're new so that I can give you the proper hello. 
If you love me, if you love what I'm doing, consider becoming a patron. For as low as a dollar a month, you can help keep this party rocking. And who rocks the party rocks the party. Jenna rocks the party, rocks the party. Consider contributing to Patreon and helping pick video topics, do one-on-one -on -one chats, and shoot, I'm flexible. What do you want? Holler at me. If you're not down with a monthly donation, I totally get that. You can do a one-time donation via PayPal. That info is also in the description box, along with all of my social media codes. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram. Hang out with me on Snapchat. And don't forget my coupon codes in the description box. Go shopping. Save some money. Do it on me. And I will see you guys next time. Until then, y'all stay beautiful.